opportunity there where you get more of that release within the soil. Yeah. So outside of the just ion fertility, you know, potassium, yeah. calcium, the other side of this test is an evaluation of nitrogen. And you're going to get nitrate, you're going to get ammonium. And those are both plant available. They're out there. Um, the other thing that we're measuring on this is we're using water as an extract and we're looking at soluble protein. Yep. Essentially. Yep. So what I always tell everybody is, you know, or ask this question a lot is I say, you know, what do cows digest first? Soluble protein. Yep. Well, what's actually doing the digestion in, in a ruminant? The bugs. Yeah, the bugs, right? Yeah. The microbes. So they've shown over and over again that that microbes break down soluble protein first if they have access to it. Now, when I say soluble protein, that's exactly what we're looking at in the soil, using the water extract to figure out what nitrogen is soluble. Okay. Now, that includes nitrate and it includes ammonium. It also includes hundreds of other compounds. So we measure the nitrate and ammonium. We subtract that from the total soluble okay. nitrogen, and what is left over is called organic. So that is your your protein portion of that. Okay. You know, it's, it's amino acids, amino sugars, and all these things. So they're all tied to carbon. That's the organic part. Yeah. And so in chemistry, if it's something's organic, it's carbon. Tied to carbon. I've yep. never understood why urea wasn't considered organic, by the way. Sidebar. Cause, that is you know, a very great point, yeah, actually. Somebody, somebody who sees this should take that up the chain. <laughs> so, so the microbes are eating this carbon. They're accessing energy. And like most organisms, they ingest this protein and they produce waste products. Yep. That process is called mineralization in the soil. So they are releasing nitrogen. Now, we it takes a couple things to do that. A, we have to know, well, how much soluble protein do, are, do they have available, right? Mm -hmm. you, 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 can't, you can't just measure microbes and think they're going to release nitrogen. Um, number two... How many microbes do you have, right? And that's soil respiration on the test. So we're evaluating how many microbes. This is a microbial biomass test. Okay. We make the conditions kind of ideal in the lab, meaning temperature and moisture. Yep. Right? So we're getting this burst. Now, in your soil, where we're going with this with rain and water, is it microbes are boom and bust. So a lot of times they're sitting there doing relatively nothing and we call that basal metabolic rate okay but when the conditions are right in other words it's been a little dry you get a two inch rain soil temperatures are 75 80 degrees you know and all of a sudden they get that rain and they respond quickly yeah and they start to consume carbon they start to replicate now are they going to tie up nitrogen or are they going to release it and this has to do with that carbon to nitrogen ratio. Yeah. For people out here that have livestock, um, and, and by the way, I do mean kids. You can count them. Um, <laughs> if you feed these livestock animals something that's really, you know, roughage, you yep. know, a really high carbon nitrogen, the composition of the manure changes, right? You feed them something that's pure protein and the composition changes again. Uh, yeah. And so... Same idea. So the C to N ratio on the test, when we start to get above 15 to 1, we start to limit or reduce back the amount of nitrogen you're going to be kicking out of the biology. They have a tendency to tie it up more. And they're doing that so they can access high carbon residue and break that down. Okay. So this is one of the big big issues that we've seen with uh, people that grow a lot of corn and they would follow corn with cereal rye. There's nothing yeah. wrong with cereal rye, but if you get it too tall and you lay it down, you've got all this really high carbon residue. Your corn gets yellow early, and they say, oh, my gosh, I got a leliopathy. And it's like, eh, no, it's most likely it's nitrogen tie-up. Yep. But what drives all of this is moisture. 100%. You've yes. got to have moisture in the soil in, in order for the microbes to eat. Again, soluble protein, right? So... If there's no moisture, there's no protein that's in any kind of a liquid solution for the microbes to take up. 
and mineralization, the microbes go dormant and mineralization slows and you don't have this release. Now, I've had this discussion a lot and I say, look, if you're under a circle or you're irrigating, doesn't doesn't matter. Yep. Right? You get into a dry land situation and things get dry. Now, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, but one of the big things I get is like, oh man, I'm not getting any of this nitrogen release. I should go put more nitrogen on. Yes and no. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right? Because what I'll say is it if, if it's dry enough, it's it, we done. all know it doesn't it's matter done. how much nitrogen yep. you put on, right? That That's not your limiting factor. So generally, if your plants start to exhibit drought stress, your microbes are exhibiting that same drought stress. That's a great way. And, to, yep. and mineralization is coming to a halt, um, right? Good weather makes any any good farmer look better. Oh, yeah. Uh, Every and, time. And yeah, and bad weather makes us look worse. So... Uh, the same is true for the lab because we are playing that that weather game here. Um, but the other thing I'll mention is that I always get asked, well, can I get more than what you give me credit for? Or will I get less? Like, is this, you're giving me this number. So we cap that credit as much of the soluble protein as we measure. So if we okay. measure if we measure twenty parts per million or call it forty pounds of potential release, I don't care if your respiration is eight hundred. I don't care if your C to N ratio is perfect at ten to one. We will only give you credit for forty pounds because okay. that's all we measure on the test. Yep. So in reality, this is happening in a continuum, right? It's yep. a conveyor belt. Yep. So if the weather's good and you continue to get the rains, are you going to get more than 40 pounds? Yeah. In a soil that's that active, you bet you will. Yep. Um, but we don't guess. We're not extrapolating out to say, you know, well, if this happens and if this happens, then you can take an additional credit. Again, the goal is not to necessarily eliminate nitrogen fertilizer in your system. It's to get you closer to that removal rate. Yes. You know, putting on one pound or 1.1 pounds per bushel and removing 0.68 or 0.7, how can we make the system more efficient to where you're able to get down to apply 0.8? Yeah. You know, yep. imagine, you know, you say, well, 0.2 pounds per bushel. It's like, yeah, but calculate that out per acre and 2,000 acres of corn, and that's some yep. serious money. So that's the goal of this. Uh, Guys, if you like the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.